What is up, Niner Empire, Niner Faithful? Wanted to bring the video many of you have been waiting for, asking for, and that's a breakdown of Solomon Thomas playing inside last year. The kid's taken a lot of heat. He was the number three overall pick, and expectations have been really high. And there's been questions. Has he been miscast? Has he just, is he just not the player that they thought he would be? Is he a player that is expendable now on our on our line? What's the deal with him? How would he even perform if we moved him inside on passing down? So uh, I wanted to show a few plays about that. One thing to understand, the kid didn't get a lot of snaps inside most of the most of the year. I think through the first 12 weeks he had maybe eight or nine snaps a game. And most of those, or only about three, sometimes four snaps of those were actually snaps uh, during passing down. So... I'm going to show a number of plays here. One thing that, that to bear in mind is even though he had a few passing downs per game, that doesn't mean that he had good, what I would consider good pass rushing opportunities. Here's an example of what I mean by that. Here is week one against the Vikings. Now, we were trying to get, this is DeForest Buckner on the right side. This is Solomon Thomas on the left side. We kept trying to get DeForest Buckner to what we would call the flex side or the weak side. This is what George Seifert used to do with Charles Haley. He would try and get him on the flex side of the line. Uh, from the back, from the all 22 view, you can see that there's three receivers on the left side here. That means that's the strong side. You just have a running back and another receiver over here to the right. They didn't shift, they didn't motion. So when we came out, we were trying to get DeForest Buckner on this flex side. The reason you do that is because most of the time, an offensive line is going to be sliding towards the tight end or towards the strong side. Because, and especially if you have a running back here, he can chip and go. So what that means is that you're. Your inside guy on that side of the line is going to be one on one versus the guard. So we're trying to get DeForest Buckner one on one, and so this is what Solomon Thomas's rush looks like. He's he has to take an inside rush because DeForest Buckner is going to be taking outside. Ronald Blair is going to be going outside. Here you see the running back is chipping on our D end, and that means now that Solomon Thomas is double teamed, and so his his inside rush gets stonewalled, and the center's got help. So that's what I saw a lot during the first 12 weeks was them trying to get either DeForest Buckner or somebody else on the flex side. And I think I counted it was about 65 to 70% of the time he was he was in a pass rush. It, he ended up getting double teamed just like this. Um, there was also a number of plays where it was screen plays or uh, quick hitting pl play action plays or... Um, they would fake a run going either to his side. And so I wouldn't call those necessarily good pass rushing opportunities. There was also a lot of times they were in stunts where he was supposed to go outside to take pull the guard and Cassius Marsh would come inside. Again, I don't call that a good pass rushing opportunity because his job is not to get to the passer. His job is to occupy a guard and a tackle to open up an opportunity for somebody else. So in as what I would consider good pass rushing opportunities, he maybe had one, one and a half a game on average. And when you look at those, he won almost half of them. So he, it wasn't like he, when he was given a good opportunity that he couldn't perform. So here's one of those opportunities. This is week two against the Lions. And he's right here playing inside on the right side of the line. And here he's just going to beat the right guard inside and so here from the snap he he's he comes he swats away the inside guard arm of the guard you're going to see this move several times he's really good he can move his lateral quickness and he's good at pinning the inside arm of a of an inside lineman and he gets pressure on matt stafford he just can't close it um he gets his arms on him and stafford dumps the ball off he had a lot of near misses as far as sacks you know i know we all want the big sack numbers, one sack on the year is not impressive for the number three overall pick. It's just not. There's no way to sugarcoat it. There's no way to talk about it. He just he he did not get enough sacks for his draft slot. Now, one thing after week twelve, once it hit week thirteen, that's when his his snap counts inside took a huge jump. I'm not sure what was going on inside the building that made this happen, but I counted for starting in week 13, he had over 30 snaps inside against the Broncos. 
against the the uh, Seahawks. He had it was I counted twenty five snap, snap snaps sorry <laughs> snaps inside against the Seahawks, and um, then against the Bears he had twenty seven snaps inside. Um, that's a huge jump that that he experienced. And so I wanted to focus on those games because those games are showing more what we would see from him full time if, you know, with D Ford and possibly a, a Nick Bosa or a Josh Allen, both guys I really like, that it would move him in nickel situations full time inside. This is what it would look like. Now here. He what he's trying to do is we're coming with a blitz with Fred Warner, so he's going to cross the face of the guard and get in this gap. Um, they're trying to do one of two things with Fred Warner. Fred Warner does not play this correctly, whatever the call is. He's either supposed to come in this B gap on this side or the B gap on that side. He and he ends up taking sort of aiming for this A gap and then goes to this A gap, but that's not really. The point of this thing you're going to see solomon thomas use his quickness to slip inside this guard and he's going to split a double team so here he he's he has a really quick lateral step you can see the guard shifted out because they were in this wide nine expecting him to rush outside and when he moves inside he's kind of caught with his pants down and again here he does a good job pinning that inside arm of the guard and breaking inside and he's got his guard the guard beat now the center here is now in a tough position he sees a blitzer coming that he should either take or any but solomon thomas has also beat his guy inside so he just kind of sticks an arm out there and he be, he beats both his guys through case keenum just gets rid of the ball there was a there was a miscommunication on this side cassius marsh gets caught looking away from the ball when it snapped and so we're trying to bring these two guys on a blitz as well we dropped Ronald Blair, and so this side doesn't get a good rush. Otherwise, you would have two guys versus one, and this should be a sack. Um, we get there, but he's, he dumps it down, and it ends up being an incomplete pass. Now, Solomon Thomas does get called for roughing the pass here, which I think is bogus. It was, I don't know, that's just me. But so there you see he's he beat his guard. He got inside. Now, here again, he's we're in this wide nine. He's right here. He's going to be going against the right guard again. This time, the guard, because he's been beat inside, is going to try and not let himself get beat inside. You can see here he doesn't take quite as wide of a, of a set, and Thomas just, just kind of works his way again. He pins the, the outside arm of the guard. He gives a swat. Now he hooks the guy's outside arm here. This is different from what he did before, but he's going to hook his arm and use the, his strength to pull down the, on this guy's shoulder so it, he he dips, loses balance, and he's going to come across. And so there he gets him, and he just gets a hand on Keenum. You can see he tugs his jersey. And again, this is also designed as well that if he takes this rush, that allows Marsh to come up inside. Marsh does not get there. Imagine a D Ford here with, a, with what we've seen in his videos. With him coming inside, this would be a sack. And it still ends up as an incomplete pass. We affect the quarterback, and he can't make any sort of a, a quality throw. But you can see this is all started by Solomon Thomas beating his guy inside. So, again, we see another quality play here. This, again, is going to be he's right here, and he's going to be going again against the right guard. And this time, he beats his guy with a, with a stutter step inside move. So here he acts like he's going out, which he's, the guy's been beat outside, and now he's again swats his arms away. He's got a really he's got really violent hands, and is able to to work it. Now the guard recovers some somewhat, but you can see he's penetrated the inside of the pocket, and he's making the quarterback get rid of the ball quickly, because um, Keenum ends up dumping the ball off. Now we end up getting a missed tackle to the, on the running back, and he gains. Um, nine yards because uh, he actually has to throw this he throw by the time this ball is completed it's two yards behind the line of scrimmage so you can see Solomon Thomas again he this is what I would consider a quarterback hurry not a pressure but he he's there he's beat his man it's what you want to see now here this is against the Seahawks here he's going to just go for an outside rush again we're in this wide nine because there's no no running backs in the, in the backfield, so that is obvi an obvious passing situation. And here he he beats this right guard 
or uh, left guard, excuse me, pretty quickly. The guard doesn't ever move his feet, and he just kind of he gives Thomas a violent punch, but he still ends up affecting the play. See here, he punches him, but he he doesn't really actually slow slow him down much or stop him. Thomas has good balance. And being a little bit shorter of a guy, that doesn't really get under him too much because he gets into the backfield, and that causes Russell Wilson to scramble because he, he's immediately got pressure, somebody in the backfield that's going to get him, so he takes off. Now, this was second and 12. Russell Wilson gets five yards and ends up being third and seven, and we stop him on the next next third down. You've created a third and long. You force the, the quarterback to do something off script. And one thing you want to do with Wilson is you want to, if you're going to let him run, let him run inside. Don't let him run outside because you you want to flush him to your defenders because he gets in here and he just slides down. It's just five yards. You know, you'll take that on second and 12. Again, here the, the guard wasn't able to match Thomas, so he gets in the backfield, affects the play. Here, um, this is later in the game. Thomas is right here. He's going to be working on the right guard now. And this time, he's going to beat this guy. This is a similar move to what he did to uh, the Broncos guard. What you're going to see is he's going to jab step out. He's going to swat this outside arm. And now he, he's going to curl. I want to want to point this out. Watch what he does here. He curls up, grabs his arm, and he's going to yank down. And watch what it does to this guard. You can see him right there. He pulls down, and it completely yanks this guard on his face. And he, he did a good job of maintaining his rush integrity here. He's, he's you got to keep your lanes against Russell Wilson. And we're coming with a blitz here. So he keeps his lane. And Russell Wilson wants to run out to that side. And he can't because Solomon Thomas has just beat his guard. And he takes off running. And this ends up getting DeForest Buckner one of his sacks. So while DeForest Buckner gets the credit on this, and we look at it, that guy and say, man, he's so great. He had double-digit sacks. Well, that this sack would have never happened had Thomas not absolutely dominated his guy. Because watch Buckner over here. He doesn't beat his his guy, the left tackle. He never beats his guy. Of course, you know, he can't go outside because of uh, the running back. But Thomas beats his guy. He's the only guy along the line that beats his guy. And so, again, another quality rush from Solomon Thomas. Guards have a hard time handling his speed and his quickness. So now here's another play. He's again against the right guard. And this, to me, was probably one of the biggest plays of this game. This was in overtime. Now, if you watched my series on how we beat the Seahawks, you've seen this play before. But I want to show it again. He This time, the guard is trying to keep himself from getting snagged. So he tries to punch here um, Solomon Thomas, and he just swats his arm away. And then he, he, he gets outside, and he's going to use his quickness. And the guard at this point is beat so bad, he tackles Solomon Thomas here. Um, and he gets called for a holding penalty, which ends up being, this was a third and four. They complete the pass for 32 yards, but because this guard gets called for holding, it ends up being third and 14. They pump the ball, and then we drive down, and we win the game. So um, now this is the very next week. This is against the Bears. So I'm showing three different teams here again. This is what we're going to see most of the time from him. He's right here, again, working on the right guard. And he's just going to beat this guy with an inside move. So, again, he aims he aims for his outside shoulder and then cuts inside. And here he, he gives the guy a violent punch. He doesn't do his, his kind of hand fighting here and sweep move. He's going to punch this guy's inside shoulder. Now, I'm going to try and do this in slow motion because it's hard to see. He has a, an extremely violent punch here. Watch this guard's head. You're going to see it actually do a little bump because he hits him so hard. And he's going to get him off balance. You see it right there, that little head nod. That's from that's from his punch. You see him punch and his head nods. That means he got his inside shoulder and inside half off balance. And the guy can't recover. And he's beat. Um, again, they get rid of the ball pretty quickly. But they end up throwing the ball six yards or five yards behind the line of scrimmage and get one yard on this play. This is that you, you can't ask for anything more from your inside li interior lineman if they can force a check down that gets one yard. So, again, he beats his guy and he gets him. So, this is what I saw a lot from him. I saw either him being double teamed, him being on a schemed pass rush where he's, um, where he's trying to run a stunt with somebody else, or 
uh, or he's he's doing well in passers. Now this wasn't again it wasn't every time or else we would see his sack numbers be higher. But I would say one on one when he was with guards or centers one on one he won at least thirty five to forty percent of the time, which is right on par with what you want from a a, a good interior lineman. Um, Joey or Nick Bosa in college, I believe PFF had him at 30%, 30, 32%, somewhere around there. Uh, I haven't double checked my numbers, but somewhere around there as far as percentage of pass rushes won. And that's what they're talking about. Percentage of times that they're one on one that they beat their man. Uh, uh, elite pass rushers win about a third of, third of the time. Uh, to me, he just hasn't been given enough opportunities. We've either been having to try and scheme a pass rush with him, or we've been trying to scheme, op- you know, DeForest Buckner open on the flex side more, and he's been facing a lot of double teams. Now he also did have moments where he had to go into a QB, excuse me, a QB spy, and I'll show those as well. So you know, while we can say okay, he had you know X amount of snaps inside, he should have a lot more sacks. Yeah, he should. I mean, he should have more snaps. He also got had a lot of near misses, but he wasn't like he was rushing the passer on every single snap inside. Even even in this game against the Broncos where he had uh, 20 26 snaps inside or 31. So excuse me. Yeah, 31 snaps inside. I believe I counted it was 15 or 16 pass rush attempts. He was double teamed, I believe, six or seven times. And then we had stunts going, uh, I think, seven or eight times. And so it only left three or four opportunities against the Broncos uh, for him in one-on-ones. And you saw with uh, several of those um, opportunities what ended up happening. So I believe with with some better edge presence and things, we'll be able to see a much improved Solomon Thomas and something that we can actually say, okay, maybe this was a guy that was worth the number three overall pick.